Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to go through the most important steps for your fall lawn care program. This is going to cover dethatching, it's going to cover core aeration, it's also going to cover putting down overseeding, starter fertilizer, malorganite, ringer fertilizer, a whole bunch of stuff for you. So stay tuned. Thank you for joining me for once again another lawn care video. I am Mike and this is Jealous Lawn Care. And first things first, we got a lot to do on our plate today. And it's going to be, we'll say, a two week course or video, I can say. First things first, we mow our lawn. That's the first step for your fall preparations for spring. Very important steps. Don't miss any of these in your fall program. So, like I said, first step, we mow our lawn. I've already done that. Make sure you notch one to two notches settings lower than normal on your mower height. And then we're going to go to the dethatching. So the reason I like to do it manually personally is because of the fact that this actually gives me a great opportunity once a year to just really get in touch and also get a workout with my lawn. So let's get started. So first question, how do you know if you need to do dethatch or not? Quick way I like to know good reference is if you pull your desatching tool across your lawn like this, is it stuck? Meaning, can you get it through pretty easily? Or see how stuck this is? No matter where I am, I'm pretty stuck. So this tells me I got too much thatch and I want to get rid of it. Now let me show you how this works. So basically just start at any corner of your yard. And in my opinion, it's very good to only knock off sections of your lawn, meaning target one little corner, then do another section, another section, like maybe I'm doing this big section now. This is going to take several hours of doing this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the other spots, maybe in front of the um, sidewalk, then go on the other side, go in front of the other sidewalk, then you know chop it off and do it in separate sections. Otherwise, you're going to be way, way too tired and you're going to have horrible blisters, so I recommend the gloves for this, alright? So let's just go through it real quick. I'll do a little section for you guys. Very manual process, of course. Very tough on the lawn. But it needs it. And this, you can tell, is leaving all the good grass still in place. But look at all this fat that's coming up. right there. I did a little section. So right here you can see I've already taken out quite a bit of that just from this already. And my lawn, I always do core aeration every year, every fall. So this is my prep work for my aeration coming next week. So very important step. I like to do this manually just so I get a little work out of the year. It makes me appreciate my lawn a little bit more. Okay, so you can tell the difference between here. So this little section here, I already beat that. Now look at how smooth this goes through. See how smooth that is? Barely gets caught at all. That's ideally what you want. Versus over here, see, I haven't done this section yet. I'm looking how hard it is to pull. So that's the frame of reference that I like to use. I'm sure, you can dig down and see, see your thatch layer, but this is just an easy frame of reference without digging up your lawn. So let's get at it. So this is the after picture for this corner that you see here. This corner here is all this desatch. Then I go around and do a strip on this side. And this is how much accumulates over there. Now this is a little bit bigger than just right here because I also did a strip this way, strip this way, put it together. 
and you can tell where my strip ends because my striping is no more over here. Sad, sad day. The nice striped picture before dethatch, ugly after dethatch. So this is what I recommend doing it in little chunks. Now I'm getting pretty tired already. It's been well over an hour already. And I've still probably got at least two thirds of my front section left. This is my biggest section, but the section I care most about. Then of course I'm gonna get this section done, that section, and that section. Now I just wanna be very clear on one thing. Dethatching, if you are aerating regularly, meaning once a year, dethatching technically is not necessary to control thatch. The reason I like to do it Again, everybody in lawn care recommends different things, but that's why you guys are watching everybody because we all have difference of opinion. The reason I like to do dethatching before my seeding and aeration come is because of the fact that I want to get rid of pretty much almost all thatch layer that's underneath the ground. Reason being is because I want all of my I want the aeration to go as deep as possible, get deep plugs, deep as you can. And also, I want all that seed that we're going to be putting down, I want it to go all the way down. I don't want it caught up in the thatch layer, because if it's in the thatch layer, the seed will not grow. Seed needs soil to soil contact. It needs that soil to germinate. And one other thing, the starter fertilizer, all that product, malorganite, ring, or whatever we're going to use, I want that all to go ideally in those holes. I, don't, I want it to hit all soil base. I don't want to be left in the thatch for weeks or years to come. So that is the reason why I like to dethatch. And I like to dethatch manually, even though you can tell that I'm a little out of breath here. So I just took a quick minute to give you guys a quick update here. And the across the street from me has the lawn care company. And I'm very surprised that they saw me out here, that they didn't come and offer their dethatching, power dethatching as a service for me. But they can tell I like to do my own work apparently. So that is my quick update for dethatching. Then lastly, before I forget, you do want to water after this is done. So just do, you know, one quick watering. It doesn't have to be too deep or anything, just one quick watering, just to make sure that your lawn comes back real quickly because you could tell right here how rough it looks. It's not pretty anymore. It's not as thick as it used to be, but it's gonna be so much browner. We just got rid of all this brown. I mean, imagine all this brown thatch that you can see, especially if you're cutting low, you'd be able to see that to some extent. So once the grass revives from this, meaning after you water it and it starts growing again, man, this is gonna look great going to come in thicker and even greater for the seeding. Spring will be beautiful. On to the next step. All right, here is my after dethatching update of the front lawn. Don't be worried that it's browner than it used to be and also browner than the neighbors. That is because I put a whole bunch of stress on it with that dethatching. But tomorrow my aeration and seeding comes, then I'll be watering religiously. This will be the best lawn once again. So don't be worried if your lawn turns brown after you're dethatching and also after cutting it lower, because that's standard for browning your grass, the dethatching and cutting it lower than you used to be. All right, now that my dethatching is done, I went ahead and raked up some spots that are dead, reseeded those, and here are the products I'm putting down. I'm gonna be using three and a half bags of Scott's Kentucky Bluegrass Seed. I'm gonna be using the Lawn Restore, mainly for the roots. See the 1006, the six is for the roots, so. I usually use Milo, but in the fall I like to use Ringer. Works great for my lawn. And then also some 
fall on food, aka some starter fertilizer, and then also some lime. So, bought this lime because I did a soil test recently and found out that my soil is too acidic. Therefore, I need to raise it up a little bit. So I'm just gonna dump one bag on the front and the back. That should cover it. One application's all I need. And just wanted to show you a couple other dead spots. So little dead spots, every spot you see with dirt on top. It's already been seeded, extra seeding. And this section here, I wanted to show you guys, just in case you're having a similar problem. See all this section here along the edge of the blacktop, excluding that, we'll get into that in a minute. But this little sections here, I sodded last year. The sod worked good in some places that is near the blacktop, but in this section seems to be in the sun all day long, day and night, it never gets shaded by trees. And you know I don't water regularly. If you watch my videos, you know that I'm not a regular water. I only water as need be. And since sod, you know, doesn't have as deep of a root system as if you're growing it from grass seed, this made the grass basically die out after, it was only like a little over a year. So again, this is also the worst summer we've had in many years in Chicago. So what I plan on doing here and experimenting with is instead of sod, laying down another patch of sod, which a lot of people also say sod is kind of like cheating, but I like to use it personally in the front yard just because of the fact that it's a quick and easy, nobody wants to see an eyesore in the front yard. Backyard, different story, but the front yard, I mainly do it for the neighbors. So what I'm gonna do, instead of doing sod, and with the unestablished root system not being used to these conditions being sun all day and hot next to the blacktop, what I'm gonna do is plant grass seed instead. This way, grass seed will likely do better in my opinion, but I may be wrong. I'll let you guys know in later on videos. So because of the grass seed will establish its own root system. And one of the problems that I have is that the blacktop here it doesn't just end where you see and then just drop off and then nice soil all the way out. What it does is it kind of goes down at an angle, kind of like a funnel. So, I mean, there's blacktop and stones all the way to, I would say, probably close to here. So you have that heat still underneath the soil and the root system. So that's not great and that's definitely not ideal for the heat of the roots. So what I'm gonna do is plant seed. Then it can establish its own root system. This way it won't be sod, and sod is very used to being ideal conditions, perfectly manicured, perfectly taken care of with soil samples and everything at the local sod shop or sod farm. So I'm thinking this will do better, but I will let you guys know. So that's what this strip is here. This little spot here, very annoying to me. My garbage man leaves the recycle bin on this spot, this exact square you see here. Leaves that spot on there every single time. And I'm, even though I'm pretty good about getting it off the lawn quickly, but you know, just constantly, 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 I would say once a day in the same spot just pisses me off. Try and get on there as much as possible, but you can only do so much, right? So that ended up killing that. This section here, this I'm also basically just topping over the old existing grass, which was sunken way low, and it actually had some kind of like divots, huge holes that go down probably like six inches, maybe some animal or something. So I'm just gonna top it off with some nice grass seed and compost topsoil mix. This way it's even with the rest of the ground. And I'm not too surprised, I'm assuming a lot of it eroded because of the fact that it's up against the drain here and that's a lot of heat that comes out of those metal drains so just want to let you know that again fall is the perfect time for doing these type of projects where nobody's lawn is perfect so this way it'll be perfect for next year because of doing the reseeding all right 
first thing we're gonna put down, and it doesn't really matter what order these things are put down in, is the line. And it's a 5,000 square foot bag, perfect for my lawn. Spreader setting is a four. Let's turn the edge guard on and start it up. go. Edge guard off and finish up. Next thing we're using is the fall lawn food, also by Scott's. Another 5,000 square foot bag, perfect for my lawn. And the spreader setting is three and a quarter. Ooh, nice and white. The nice white clean look is the exact opposite of what I'm used to. You know what I'm talking about. Milo is black. Gotta love the Milorganite. Edge guard on. And finish up. All right, next up is one of my favorites, Ringer Long Leaf Store. Surprise, surprise, 5,000 square foot bag. So you know the whole thing's going down, right? Oh, but these are much bigger granules. You can tell because I can only get half the bag in there. And that's why cars need exhaust. So you can tell these are much bigger granules because of the fact that I can't even fit the whole bag in there. I can only fit about half in my hopper versus the last products that I used. I was able to fit the full 5,000 square foot in there. So spreader setting at seven and a half. And edge guard on. Hope you start seeing a pattern now. All right, edge guard off and finish the job. And now for one of the most important steps of the overseeding and aeration process is the Kentucky bluegrass seed. Let's dump this in. Very fine stuff. Also blue. Nice color. And what the heck, let's dump two in. And with seed, you know we always go heavy handed, right? Can't hurt to make it thicker, right? Too much grass seed is never a bad thing. Spreader setting is now at three. Edge guard on. Edge guard off and finish up. All right, what's the last step in our process today? That is to blow off or sweep off your driveway and concrete so nothing stains. You don't think you got any stuff on there? Just in case, maybe you are as accident prone as I am. Did you happen to do this? It's okay, I did it too. Definitely gotta blow this off now. All right, last step, but definitely not the least step is, you guessed it, start sprinkling. Very important to sprinkle the lawn to get all that fertilizer and other product off of the leaf blades and down into the soil base where it's going to be activated. And then watch and wait and see every day how your grass gets so much darker green. 
in the next month. We're gonna be watering the fertilizer and everything we put down. It's gonna be activating. It's gonna be a beautiful thing. And take some time and make sure you enjoy whatever you like to drink. For me, some Mike, Mike's Hard Lemonade. Take some time and enjoy your lawn. I say this in a lot of my videos, but I know a lot of us do not have the time to sit here and enjoy the watering or the after effect of our lawn care. But it's very important that you do this. You know, too often it, we only spend time on our lawns because we're cutting it or putting product down. We don't have a chance to just sit there like this and enjoy it. Very important that you take this time. Find some new appreciation for the lawn and all of our lawn care. Thank you guys for watching once again another lawn care video with Mike here. If you guys have any other questions, leave me something in the comments below. If not, stay tuned for next time. And since I am watering here, I should probably mention real quick my watering skills that I like to use for any time I use seed. So basically anytime I'm seeding like this in the fall, I like to do one month of watering. Basically what I like to do is the first week I'll water three times a day for roughly 15 minutes. And then in week two, I'll cut it down to twice a day. Same increments of 15, maybe 20 minutes. Then week three, I'll do it once a day and I'll do it a little deeper. I'll do it once a day, about 30 minutes. This way the roots will slowly dry out over the next day before the next watering and then that's what you want because you want the roots to not be shallow you want to actually grow deeper and deeper into the ground and to be able to stand alone versus our stress and drought over summer and weather all right then in the fourth week for my watering schedule especially for kentucky bluegrass that takes roughly 30 days for full growth or germination this is what I recommend doing once every other day for deep 30 minutes. So again, we're making those roots basically go down as deep as possible into the ground before we fully let off the watering schedule, all right? Then after that month, you should be able to let it go on its own and the roots should be established on their own by then.